Hello, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to set up an event queue and I'm going to get into a little bit of event driven programming. Now, not a lot. It's basically going to be a jump. So when I hit space, we're going to jump. That's it. Just as a refresher, this is the code base that we're working with. It's been a while since I did this stuff, but this is fingers crossed going to turn into a sort of Alice Madness Returns clone of some sort. Um, but what I want to do, I, yeah, if, just as a refresher, if we right click, we zoom in just like that. Um, but I want to set this up so that when I hit space, I jump. That's it. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to head over to events and I'm going to define a bunch of stuff. I'm going to define two classes. Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to define a constant, which will be the code associated with a jump event. I'm also going to define an event class, which will pretty much just wrap a code for the time being. So pretty much we'll just save that event type. And I'm also going to put in a getter. And all that will do is return the event type. So like I said, it just stores an integer, wraps it just like that. Now, the next thing is going to be pretty big, and this is an observable abstract base class. So the concept for an object to be observable is for an object to be observable, it should know about a set of observers which are watching it. Those observers are going to be represented by lists of event objects. Anyway, so we have this observable object and we get to a point where we want to push out a message. We want to publish a message so that everything that's observing it will see that message. What it will do is for each of the lists which are registered with it, it will append a copy of the message to that list. And that's it. So again, we're going to have a variable called observers, and I will expect this to be a list of event queues. In other words, a list of events, just like that. I'm going to give this class another method, which will add an observer. And basically what this will do is we'll take in an event queue and append it to our set of event queues. So we'll go add observer. And we can simply take our observers and append that new observer. And then finally, we want to publish an event. So this method will take in the event object that we want to publish, and it will basically append it to each of the event queues. So pretty much we'll just look through, we'll do a for loop, and each of those will append our event. Okay, so there we have it. That's the, the mechanism of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my main program so that my main program can emit or publish that jump event. But in order to do that, I'm probably going to need to set up my scene so that my scene can observe that event. I know there's, it's like a balancing act. We have to change a few things at the same time. So I'm gonna to go to my scene and I'm gonna say, well, first of all, I'm, oh, I've got events. Okay, cool. I'll go self, event queue there we go okay so we've got that event queue and i'm going to give this a bit of a funny function i'm going to have a getter and this will return a list mm. there we go so now i'm going to go over to my main app and i'm going to say all right 
you are being observed by the scene. So I'll go to my control module and then I should probably import the events module and then inside my game app, I'm gonna get my game app and say, well, now my game app inherits from the observable class. It's observable. And right down here where I make assets, that includes making the scene just like that. And I, oh, there's something that I missed. Of course, every time we inherit from something, we're gonna need to call the initializer, just like that. Okay, now, back when I create my scene, I'm also going to add it as an observer. So I'll say self, add observer, and the observer will be my scenes event queue. Okay, so anything that I publish right now will be visible to the scene. And it'll be up to the scene to handle that message. So we should probably publish a message. So I'm going to go down to my... So there's a few places I could set this. I'm going to set it in the key callback because when I hit space, the key callback is triggered once and only once. I could have it in the, there's a lot of code here. I could have it in the handle keys, but the handle keys is for logic, which should be performed every frame for every key that's on. And jumping is more of a, a one-off event. So I'm gonna do that in the key callback. So what I'll do is I'll just test if that key was the uh, space key. And furthermore, if that was pressed. Okay. And then if that is the case, then I can go ahead and publish a jump event. So I'll say publish and I'll construct the event. And then for the code there, I'll put in the jump code. So all the infrastructure is set up on the app side. I'm just going to need to change a few things so that my object can actually jump. Okay, so I'm gonna head over to my model and I'm gonna have a look at the entity. I'm just gonna put in some basic physics stuff. So I'm gonna give the entity a velocity and a gravity variable. And I also wanna track basically how many times we've jumped. So I'll start off with gravity and I pretty much just want that to be some sort of downwards value. I think I'm going to go with 0 0.02. This is from a little bit of experimentation. It's not perfect. And then I'm going to give myself some velocity, which of course will just be zero. And I'm going to make this is going to track the number of times we have currently jumped. There we go. Gravity, velocity, and jumps. That's all fine. Then there's a lot of code. Maybe I shouldn't have all these random like getters and setters. Oh, well. Okay, so I've got this update function, which currently is just a placeholder. Nothing's going on here. Now I'm actually going to work with it. So I'm going to change, use my acceleration to update my velocity. So I'll go rate times my gravity. And then I'm going to use my velocity to update my position. Okay. So far so good, but of course we've got negative gravity, so we'll probably be falling down. So we wanna check if we are falling through the ground. So I believe that when I created my entity, I gave them a, get out of the way, I gave them a height of 0 0.9. So I probably don't wanna fall below that. So my test will be um, if the Z component of my position is less than or equal to my ground level, which is 0 0.9, 
then I'll go ahead and zero out my velocity, or at least the Z component of my velocity. And I'll probably snap down my position to the ground. And finally, I'm going to reset my jump count because we just hit the ground. So then I'm going to give myself some sort of function, some sort of method which gets called to tell the entity to jump. So my test, I guess, we're going to go Alice Madness returns, quadruple jump. Fair enough. Um, so if we've still got enough jumps left, then of course register this one. And then I'm going to apply the energy from that jump. So I'll take my velocity Z component and increment it by, I think, 0 0.8. Again, some experimentation went into this and a whole lot more experimentation is going to have to go into it to match this to your needs. But there we have it. Okay, so the player can jump. Let me look at this. The app can take a key press and emit a signal to say, yep, the player can jump. The scene has an event queue, which is hooked up to the app. So when that message gets emitted, the event queue intercepts it and says, yep, I can see that the player should jump. The player has a function that makes it jump and an update function that will handle the physics. So I think what we need to do is connect it up on this side so that when the scene sees that jump event, it does what it needs to do with the player. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a method to handle events. Okay, so one thing we're going to need to do is go through the whole queue. So I'll say mm, for event in our event queue, we'll handle it. So I'll say if event, why is that not? Just going to specify this. The reason I'm specifying this is to get autocomplete on this. So, yep, I can get the type. I can test that, and if that's working, then I'll get my player and tell them to jump. Fair enough. And then right at the end, I'm going to clear my event queue. So I'll get my event queue and I'll call the clear function. Okay, looks good. So then this handle events is going to have to happen upon update of the scene. So I go to my update function, I handle events just like that. So again, I know that I keep saying this, I'll go through it again. We have our app. Our app upon key press will, for every observer, push on a jump event. The scene has that event queue on which that's getting pushed. Every frame when it comes to update, it looks at that event queue. It sees the jump event. It tells the player to jump. The player knows how to jump. Anyway, so let's go ahead and give that a shot. Okay, so very interesting. Nothing is happening. Maybe we should update the player. See how that goes. Hmm, very interesting. Okay. Oh my goodness. You know, the fundamental rule of development is the sillier an error is, the longer it sticks around. Maybe we should, maybe we should return this. That'd help. Okay. So that's, that's a little strange, isn't it? Okay, so, I think it's working, but we're going to need to, we're going to need to update the camera code. Okay, so I understand this recalculate frame of reference function is a little technical, but again, the basic idea is we have an arm displaced from the player. We do some sort of rotation around the player. The player is a center of, ax, a center of rotation, and... 
and this pause it's a position is the um yeah it's sort of the look target so we probably shouldn't be looking at the player's height if that makes sense so i'm going to sort of just set that to zero see what that does there we go and that's and that's working as expected so as you can see um needs a bit of tweaking but it jumps and we can do multi jumps but we have a limit on the number of multi jumps that we can do we can zoom in and jump and yeah it's pretty cool i'm happy with that so again i know this was a little all over the place but it's fun in this video we set up an event queue and we published an event to our scene which then passed it along and handled it hope you enjoyed this hope you learned some stuff gave you some ideas maybe and i will see you in the next one bye hey so i just wanted to take a second to say thank you to all of my channel supporters i know normally i put in text but after i wiped my macbook i thought Let's do a read. So, thank you to Antonin Caret, Dankil Falls, Declan, Andalon Studios, Jason Coleman, Matthew Derrick, Moin, Shreya, and Skibbity Pop. Thank you, my dudes. Much appreciated. If you would like to support the channel, it's just $2.50 a month. That's all I ask, and it really goes a long way to uh, helping me buy nice things like coffee, which comes invaluable. You okay there? Which is really useful for uh, both coding and video production. If you can't afford to support the channel, no problem. I, I don't require it. Probably the best thing you can do is to comment on the videos, let me know what sort of content you would like to see. I produce a little bit of everything, but otherwise, have a great time. Bye.